Hi, uh, my name is Kajal and uh, I started uh, learning about Swift recently and uh, I came across various features over here so I had a talk with Shub and uh, wanted to discuss uh, about Clojure in this session. Okay, uh, Clojure is something like a, it's a functionality block and you can pass it around the code. It's just like function and it is available in various other programming languages like if you have been doing JavaScript or you have been doing any other language like Cisha, then you might have seen it over there. Okay. So, within Swift, there are three different uh, types of closure. One is global function, the second one is nested, and the third one is closure expression. So, if you have any global function, that is as same as, uh, like that, that's a kind of closure, special case of closure, which basically does not captures, uh, mm, captures a, a variable. Whereas in nested function, uh, I'll show you that how it captures the uh, uh, variable scope. And there are closer expressions as well. Okay. <coughs> so, if we if we take up this uh, example and let's try to see that uh, what exactly it is. Normally, a function uh, is having this uh, particular uh, presentation where it accepts an empty string and returns a, a string over here. So, we have got function pointers, which is also available in uh, other languages. And let's try to run this. So uh, here I have uh, two uh, two methods in example. One is say hello, and the other one is sum. You can see the signatures. Like uh, <coughs> the first one is accepts string as an input, and it returns a string as an output. Uh, that is fn, and the fn two is basically sum, and uh, you can see the string representation where it accepts two input as a parameter and returns an integer. Okay, so. These are a simple case of uh, uh, functions, uh, like you can say as a global function, and we generally in day to day life we don't, uh, uh, we don't uh, bother much about it. Now, we have a case of nested function. A nested function is something like uh, within JavaScript also you can see that you can have function within a function. In the same way, Swift can also have a function within a function. Okay. and. Uh, I have a very simple example like we have a uh, we have operation like addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, all right, and uh, and we have a we have a method called get operation, and we we supply the parameter that what kind of operation we want, and it returns an uh, <coughs> returns a function which accepts a type uh, and an input as an integer and returns uh, the calculated value. So these are quite uh, plain uh, plain functions like uh, add, subtract, as it uh, as you cannot see from the signature. We have a local variable over here. I'll, I'll talk more about it. Okay. So add is a function which basically adds the value to the number, uh, adds the value to the result and returns the uh, final value, okay. And the same case uh, applies to other methods, all right. So for division, we have got a, a simple uh, uh, check that if it is greater than zero, then it will compute the value, otherwise it will return zero, okay. So uh, there's a switch case on operation, that's exactly what you want to return. Here, the methods are only, uh, they exist as a signature, just like a class. But they are not actually invoked at the moment. So, uh, based on the operation, which is requested in get operation, the appropriate function is returned back. Okay. So, uh, and now, uh, a special case over here you can see is uh, like, I created the demo itself within a function. Okay. So, this indicates that we can have a function within a function, within a function. So, uh, 
this this feature is very good in functional programming and uh, the most of the new languages which are coming in the market right now like uh, you can see swift uh, rust and uh, those who have experience with haskell as well so uh, it's quite helpful so uh, in the in this demo uh, you can observe that uh, we have requested for an addition operation now we hold a pointer to function add and initial value is 0 so if you do a function add it will give you value as 10 if you second time if you make a call to function add it will return a value of uh, 20 because it, it, it gives a hold a local copy of uh, f an add holds an instance of result in its <coughs> we have requested subtract again in the second operation now subtract will have its own copy of result so both of the function they will, they will hold their own copy of the result variable okay so if you subtract 3 from 0 you'll get minus 3 now there are cases when when you want to share the state of uh, uh, variable or you want to have just a single variable languages like c they have static uh, static variables but in case of function you cannot have a static variable directly so there's a way to solve this uh, solve this problem that uh, instead of this result you can uh, you can create a struct which has a starting number okay and it changes changes result to So here, uh, mm. all right. So here you can see that uh, both add and subtract, they both are sharing the uh, the state. Where uh, two method calls to this addition will make a twenty, then you subtract a value from it. It will make a three. So in case if you wish to share. Uh, Share the state. You can uh, you can make use of struct within a uh, within a function. So this is uh, the case of a nested function where uh, you have uh, uh, you have seen that you have captured the uh, the external variable even though uh, you have uh, you have taken an instance of uh, function add. Now one interesting thing over here is like all the all the closures are reference type. Okay. So mm -hmm. if you if you reassign this well uh, this to something else like let f n one equals to f n add and if you make a call f n one so it will make it twenty two otherwise also if you don't use the struct instead of uh, instead of this struct, even if you use this variable, then also uh, this fn add and fn1, they both will share the same same state. Okay. Now, uh, the next one is basically, uh, have, uh, I have this closure. I have taken uh, a few a few content from uh, Apple Swift uh, documentation, which is online, and which is quite, uh, Quite a nice book to go through. So uh, generally, uh, like like most of the use, uh, what we have uh, of closure is to uh, define a predicate. A predicate is something basically which which works on, works on a verb, okay, and you have a criteria, and uh, it simply evaluates whether that condition is true or false. Like uh, we have got filter, map, reduce, sort, this kind of uh, activity which you want to perform, you want to convert. Uh, based on certain criteria, you want to convert uh, your data to uppercase, lowercase, or you want to just filter out a few of the text, this kind of stuff. 
so you can create a uh, appropriate predicate here i have created a predicate called increasing order okay it it simply checks compares two numbers so one number is small if if checks that number one is smaller than uh, number two uh, it returns true definitely otherwise uh, false okay so so i have this predicate and uh, just make call to this closure loop so here uh, i have this number there are six <coughs> numbers and when i'm making a call to sort method it is uh, taking the array and uh, sorting it to increasing order uh, there are basically two methods available in sort one is sort and the other one is sort in place okay. sort in place basically sorts the existing array doesn't create a copy of it and this sort method returns uh, the sorted uh, sorted array okay now uh, we have we have given uh, provided the predicate to the sort method if you if you check uh, <coughs> if you check this uh, the sort method it basically it accepts a predicate of two parameters okay and which returns a boolean value now the predicate itself should return uh it has got a bigger predicate which returns a uh, the actual element okay let's go back we can simplify uh, our <coughs> predicates into uh, much more manner because mostly in functional programming we have uh, mostly the short notations of uh, the syntax what we use okay i tried to sort it in this way so instead of uh, instead of uh, providing a complete method i have given it a closer expression a closer expression is something like uh, it has a signature and there is n which is a keyword and then you then the body follows okay so i have uh, done exactly the same thing but i have put n over there and this curly bracket uh, is at this particular position here all right so that's another way of doing it you can simplify it. swift has a feature called inferring the data type so swift automatically infers the data type of uh, the parameter from the content of array a type of content which is there in the uh, score uh, score array it basically takes the same data type assumes that it's the same one and it applies the operator and calculations on the same data type all right so you can simplify it further like uh, i have simplified it as uh, like the return type can also be inferred so you don't need to mention the return type so this is even shorter and if the return keyword is also uh, optional and if it is a single line statement then you can uh, simply remove the return keyword from here as well now And this is quite interesting part where we have a shortened argument notation so instead of uh, taking it as number 1 or number 2 uh, you can use the position the parameter position as a variable name just prefix it with the dollar sign okay so uh, swift compiler already knows that sort takes a method with two arguments so you don't need to mention the arguments over here number 1 or number 2 okay it infers uh, the data type and also it it knows that the compiler knows that you are here you meant the first argument and by dollar one you meant the second argument okay and you have an operator over there so you can simply uh, provide this expression and uh, the compiler automatically generate the same uh, same code what it generates for the previous expression okay so there is another function or the uh, operator function which is even shorter than this where you can simply provide the operator sign <coughs> now uh, this basically works on like <coughs> we can even simplify it like the compiler knows that okay this is a less than operator a less than operator cannot work without two arguments so it definitely need two arguments the provided number of arguments are also two so it simply assumes that on the left hand side you are keeping the first argument 
on the right hand side you are keeping the second argument and whatever is the comparison uh, result it returns us back to the sort method okay so uh, they all work in the same way and they all gives you the same result so that's a simplification of a method uh, which is quite long uh, like this and you can make it short this is quite helpful like uh, you don't need to create utility methods for your uh, for your classes or for your objects now uh, there is something called trailing closure <coughs> trailing closure means uh, there's another catch over here uh, if you have if you have a method which accepts or which takes a, a closure as an input and if that input closure is the final argument that's the last argument within that method like sort has uh, sort takes just one one method over here which is a closure and if you have got something which takes three parameters and the third parameter is your uh, closure so you can simply uh, close the bracket over here just like a method call and you can place the close the expression right after the uh, method call it is called as trailing closure it's something like uh, uh, like like suppose if you have got uh, some object dot method argument 1 then there's named argument x argument 2 and then there is a closure the third parameter is closure so what you can simply do is you can create the closure body here and you can simply write whatever you want to do mm. as a as a final argument okay so it looks like a body of this method but basically it's a uh, you can you can treat it like like this so instead of uh, getting puzzled into bracket matching and uh, it's better if you can uh, use uh, directly as a final argument you, you don't you don't need to put the label over there as well now uh, this this moon brackets are also optional so what you can do you can simply put the curly braces and uh, swift knows that this is a method and there are no more parameters now if you want to get rid of moon brackets uh, it is compulsory that uh, your sort method or whatever method it is it should have just one parameter and which uh, takes the closure as an argument okay so uh, uh that's something uh, with closure there is a uh, something called uh, auto closure as well uh, but frankly uh, i i am still uh, looking out for uh, a right use case where i can make use of uh, auto closure just now we discussed a lot of uh, different ways to uh, make use of closure and uh, these are the six uh, different ways uh, i took it from on the website it was quite well explained so so this is a map reduce function where it maps each of the elements and gives it to the closure function and the closure function multiplies that element and it turns back the multiplied value okay all of these uh, six uh, expression return the same result <coughs> so we talked about uh, <coughs> capturing values the capturing values is something like uh, we discussed uh, in in the operations method where it has got add subtract multiply and divide where it captured the um, value uh, variable which was in the outer scope the result with variable and uh, we also get to know about it like uh, each uh, closure is a reference type you can pass it on further and it will remain as it is and the captured value within the closure will also remain captured within the scope of the closure <coughs> we talked about trailing closure which means like uh, if you have a function call then uh, and the last argument is a closure then you can make use of trailing closure using them using the curly brackets uh there are three more things like uh, no escape auto closure and auto closure by escaping uh normally uh, if you don't want to make make the call of closure uh at that moment within that function call for example suppose uh, sort also wants to take an average at the end 
but not at the time when it is sorting or there could be more than one function call. Uh, then you can make use of uh, 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 escaping uh, escaping closures. Uh, maybe later I will come up with a demo of that. Uh, I'm just trying to find the right case for this uh, with a uh, good example. Right. So, yeah. So, thanks. <coughs> Any questions? Yeah. Questions? Yeah. Alright. Thank you. Alright, so I have some sort of questions uh, as part of the page. And these are very, very basic questions.